This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. But here now the news for July 31st, 2023. Kevin Meyer and Tom Staggs have both been contacted individually by Disney to advise the CEO Bob Iger on TV strategy, says Matthew Baloney of Puck. Meyer and Staggs were both popular picks to replace Iger as CEO the first time, uh, but were passed over, leading to the executives leaving Disney, among a number of other reasons, mostly Bob Chapek. Uh, Disney reportedly reached out to Meyer and Staggs about taking over the company when Bob Chapek's contract was up, but didn't follow through because such a deal would have required Disney to buy their startup, Candle Media, and Chapek would have been the one they needed to sign off on that. And obviously, he would have known uh, if he signed off on that, why they were buying that company. And so instead, Disney brought back uh, Bob Iger instead. Industry executives predict Meyer and Staggs could return to the company with the acquisition of Candle Media. The, uh, these reported advisement roles could just be the start of one of them becoming the new CEO, uh, or they could be a CEO team for that matter. The pair are consulting with Iger, ESPN President Jimmy Pitaro, and other executives about linear TV properties and streaming. Uh, Disney and a representative for Meyer and Staggs declined to comment when they were contacted by Baloney. Um, this is a fascinating development. Um, so I, I think if you've watched this show for any amount of time or been a WWT follower for, for over a decade, um, you know when Tom Staggs was in the company, we were big Tom Staggs fans. Tom Staggs comes from a, mostly a finance background, but uh, when he was in charge of Parks and Resorts, we had the most amazing renaissance, right? Um, the redo of California Adventure, Cars Land, Buena Vista Street. Um, the first time, uh, that was the first time that park was profiting, right? Um, the first time Hong Kong Disneyland ever turned a profit was during the Stags years when they approved uh, Mystic Point and uh, Grizzly Gulch, both that, that whole expansion. Um, we saw the Dream and the Fantasy come on board the Disney Cruise Line, the two, arguably the two best ships they've ever done. Um, it was a time, new fantasy land at Magic Kingdom. We, it was a time of unprecedented expansion and really a rebirth for parks and resorts, which led to an era of success that Bob Chapek rode out and, and, and eventually destroyed. But um, nonetheless, I, I, Tom Staggs is a tremendous executive. Um, Kevin Meyer in his own realm when it comes to the development of the streaming side of the company, other stuff he did, um, was a pivotal player in all of that. Um, so these are two great people. Tom Staggs is my vote. If we if we uh, need a new CEO, that's who I want. That's who I'm rooting for. And this is a good sign that uh, one of, if not both of these guys, are probably going to come back into the fold sooner rather than later, which can only be a good thing for the future of the company. I look forward to hearing more about it. But Tom Staggs, I'm, I'm a stag stan, as the kids would say. Monorail Green has returned to service at the Walt Disney World Resort with brand new Black Deltas. The monorail underwent an interior refurbishment already back in 2019, uh, but there are now decorative black deltas on the green stripe running around the exterior of the monorail. Other monorails have gained uh, similar decorations during recent refurbishments. Of course, uh, we do expect there was a light cleanup on the interior as well, but um, a major the, the most noticeable uh, part of the refurbishment was the addition of the deltas. With just a couple of weeks until the start of Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party at the Magic Kingdom, Halloween scarecrows and jack-o'-lanterns have arrived in Town Square on Main Street, USA. Two jack-o'-lanterns are in a planter in front of the Walt Disney World Railroad Station at the entrance of the park. Uh, as well, the scarecrows are gathered in the planters at the center of Town Square with pumpkins on the ground around them. Each is in a unique outfit, and some represent different aspects of Main Street. Uh, of course, it's, they've been there for many, many years now. As well, across Town Square, another pair of jack-o'-lanterns is outside of City Hall. This is just the beginning. As you know, Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party begins August 11th at the Magic Kingdom. It's not the earliest it's ever been, though, at least by a day. So don't, don't judge them too harshly that we're putting up decorations in July. New foliage has been added to Tiana's Bayou Adventures facade in the Magic Kingdom, and as well, the Q's barn has been repainted in a new color as crews continue to update the attraction's exterior. The barn that guests entered Splash Mountain through has been repainted yellow now, and scaffolding is still up around it as they continue that process, but it's going to be uh, bright yellow. It's pretty different. And despite the crews going up to paint the barn from top to bottom, the Br'er Rabbit weather vane remains at the top of the barn. I wouldn't get your hopes up. I don't think this is going to be left as some homage. I don't think it's going to be allowed. Um, they just haven't gotten to it yet. So don't get too excited yet 
everybody. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical Disney vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. Instagram user Foos Gone Disney recently shared footage of guests disembarking It's a Small World at the Magic Kingdom without cast member authorization or supervision. The video appears to show a family getting out of their boat in the Polynesian section of It's a Small World as a small child starts wading in the water, followed by another older child, while what may be the parent following suit not far behind. The full video can be viewed at a link uh, which is available on our site. Uh, original audio has been replaced with a song in the post with... Uh, which listener's discretion is advised. I want to warn you about that. Um, but this is, this is amazing. This is just days after we saw this at Disneyland where people didn't want to wait to be evacuated from pirates and they just jumped in. Um, I'll say this again. I, I know sometimes you get stuck in rides for a long time and it can be frustrating, but these are big mechanical behemoths, these things, and you do not want to get out and get into them. Number one, that water is filthy. But number two, like there's a lot going on under there that you don't, think about um, and it's very easy to get it'd be very easy to get cut or harmed in some way so don't don't do it you know if you want to complain afterwards and try to get a fast pass or something you know obviously still be nice about it but that's the way to go don't jump out of a boat and and do, don't do that do not infrastructure is underway for the upcoming nighttime spectacular at epcot and an aerial look from photographer bio reconstruct shows the construction of the new barges in the photo you're looking at now, BioReconstruct has labeled four areas as follows. There's the new barges in the marina, a collection of square platforms, staging area of parts, possible assembly area, and suspension for red crane to lift the large items. Guests who detested the large harmonious barges may be concerned about new obstructions to World Showcase Lagoon, but the images show the relative size. Here you see side by side of the harmonious Taco and Stargate barges uh, in the same marina, but now you look at them in uh, the new barges in the same marina. Obviously, they are significantly smaller. A close-up of the new barges shows motors on the end, uh, and of course many have asked, are these barges, since there are barges, are they going to sit in the middle like the harmonious ones? No. Um, these will be like the ones in Illuminations Reflections of Earth, which traveled in, uh, from the marina into the lagoon nightly. That's what's going to happen here. That's why they're smaller. Um, part of the harmonious problem was they overbuilt those barges and decided it was cheaper and easier to just park them out there. Um, but these barges will do what the old ones did, and that is every day they'll travel under that bridge between China and the African outpost and into the lagoon. The new show is supposed to debut for the Disney 100 Years of Wonder celebration at Epcot, which kicks off on September 22nd. Disney uh, notably uh, did not mention this show when they announced everything starting on September 22nd. That may not mean anything. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but the show is on the way. Living with the Land at Epcot has a new hydroponic system in the vertical growing section. The new equipment can be seen to the right as your boat enters the final greenhouse. Uh, it's on the ground versus the vertical growing systems, which, of course, hanging from the ceiling nearby, but blends in with the other hydroponic systems in the Living with the Land attraction. It's a white rectangle uh, with open sides to show off the rows of plants growing inside. And as described during the ride's narration, vertical growing uses less space than traditional growing, which saves water and increases production. Hydroponics uses a water-based nutrient solution instead of soil to grow plants, Living with, the Land also has, Living with the Land also has an aquaponic system at the end of the attraction, which combines hydroponics with aquaculture, with fish providing a natural fertilizer for plants. A new Enchantress costume has debuted in Beauty and the Beast live on stage at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It seems to take direct inspiration from the original animated film. Her new costume is a bright green overdress with a stained glass pattern all over, worn over a matching green long sleeve leotard and tights. There are even bright green shoes to match. This Enchantress costume uh, change immediately brings to mind the look of the transformed character from the original animated film, which features this same bright green. It appears that the overdress also utilizes a stained glass pattern to call back to the opening moments from the film in which the prologue is told through the stained glass artwork. The Enchantress's original costume in the show was more inspired by the pre-transformation costume worn by the character in the film, you know, the rags and such. 
The Endor Forest mural outside of Star Tours at Disney's Hollywood Studios has been covered with green scrim. The mural serves as a backdrop to the enormous tree trunks that emulate the forest moon of Endor outside of Star Tours. The reason for this, uh, that mural was falling apart. It was crumbling, essentially. Um, not only was the paint faded to white, but there were thicker portions of paint that were just simply um, peeling off. Whatever hadn't faded away was sort of just falling off of the mural. So happy to see this. Nice to see them um, proactively doing some maintenance. DVC Resale Market is the world's largest Disney Vacation Club reseller. For anyone looking to buy or sell any Disney Vacation Club property, the DVC Resale Market is the place. The entire staff is made of Disney-trained former cast members who deliver an unmatched level of experience, knowledge, and efficiency seven days a week. If you're thinking about becoming a Disney Vacation Club member, their team can welcome you home for less, uh, for less with savings of up to 75% off Disney Direct pricing. Make sure to head on over to dvcresalemarket.com. The Disney Careers website has posted a new casting call for a solo jazz pianist to portray Joe Gardner from Disney Pixar's animated film, Soul. The performer must be able to play proficiently in the solo piano jazz style and will, require, will be required to learn specific music. The performer must be able to engage with guests within the story of the film and knowledge of jazz music and historical musicians is a plus. Uh, this would be Joe Gardner's Disney Parks debut as a character, though he will likely not be meeting guests in the traditional sense as he will be playing an instrument. Disney has announced that the former Steakhouse 55 at the Disneyland Hotel will become a flexible lounge space. Steakhouse 55, with the 55 referencing the 1955 opening of Disneyland, has been closed since 2020 when it was initially shuttered due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Disney announced the restaurant's permanent closure with a statement in the summer of 2021 stating, at this time, there are no plans to reopen Steakhouse 55 at the Disneyland Hotel. We are exploring options for this location and we'll update you when we have news to share. In January of this year, construction curtains went up in front of the restaurant. We now know it will be a lounge space that will sometimes operate as an extension of a seasonal bar. Construction work will officially begin this week with the Steakhouse 55 sign set to be removed. Disney Parks has shared a look at the top of Tiana's Palace featuring the restaurant's completed marquee and riverboat-inspired smokestacks and wheelhouse. We, of course, caught a glimpse of the smokestacks and wheelhouse behind a scrim just a few days ago. We talked about that on the show here. The scaffolding has come down, though, revealing them in all their glory with the Tiana's Palace uh, logo on the balcony below. An opening date for Tiana's Palace still has not been announced, but it looks like it's nearly done. It's, of course, a reimagining of the longstanding French market restaurant in New Orleans Square at Disneyland. Paul Rubens, the actor most well known for portraying the beloved Pee Wee Herman, has sadly passed away. The news was shared via the official Pee Wee Herman Facebook account. Quote, last night we said farewell to Paul Rubens, an iconic American actor, comedian, writer, and producer, whose beloved character Pee Wee Herman delighted generations of children and adults with his positivity, whimsy, and belief in the importance of kindness. Paul bravely and privately fought cancer for years with his trademark tenacity and wit. A gifted and prolific talent, he will uh, forever live in the comedy pantheon and in our hearts as a treasured friend and man of remarkable character and generosity of spirit. Uh, Rubens, of course, was not only legendary for portraying the children's TV character, which, believe it or not, uh, started as a very not family-friendly act years earlier. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, but in the realm of Disney parks, he's also a legend, leaving an indelible mark. He portrayed Captain Rex, or RX-24, on the original Star Tours attraction, which led the character to become one of the most iconic in the history of themed entertainment. The character was so beloved that it not only received an homage in Star Tours The Adventures Continue, but Rubens returned to voice the character once more for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, where the droid returned as DJ Rex in Oga's Cantina. Rubens was also part of the film portion of the original Backlot Tour at the Disney MGM Studios. That didn't last for long, but of course he portrayed Pee Wee Herman in that film. His Disney voice acting credits also included Tron Uprising, Star Wars Rebels, Phineas and Ferb, Teacher's Pet, Hercules the TV series, The Nightmare Before Christmas, where he played Locke of Lock, Shock, and Barrel, uh, Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, and Flight of the Navigator. Kids, look it up. Of course, um, personally, uh, I would dare say the two biggest influences on me as a kid, um, Pee Wee's Playhouse and Star Tours. That's what I grew up on, and so this is uh, heartbreaking. I had to call my mother today because... Um, you know, my parents would always sit and watch Pee Wee's Playhouse with me, but 
Um, you know, what an incredible loss. What an incredible talent. I think if you're a kid of the 80s or early 90s, there is no way Paul Rubens didn't touch your life in some way. And if you're a Disney Parks fan, um, he obviously did. You know, Captain Rex sits on this desk every single day for every show. And the reason for that is I love this character. And, and uh, Rubens portrayal was masterful uh, comedy masterclass in voice acting, right? Um, so he will be missed, but he will be remembered forever, whether it's um, Pee Wee's Playhouse or Star Tours or any of the other work he did. Um, uh, Paul, wherever you are, thank you for everything you contributed to my life and the lives of so many people. We deeply appreciate it. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make this show happen every single week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. Each week, join host Rob Whiteside as he and a panel of Disney superfans take a different movie or TV show from the Disney Plus catalog. They'll tell you its history, details, and give their review so you'll know if it's worth your time. Current shows, classic movies, and everything in between. Watch Deep in the Plus live Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern for new episodes. Or catch Deep in the Plus anytime on YouTube on WDWNT-TV.